What is up everyone, my name is Jasper and today I got a very exciting video. So I've been seeing a few comments recently that uh, ask me how I do my search analysis and how I find topics to write about. And whereas my approach used to be kind of boring and very straightforward, uh, over the last couple of weeks I've been using a tool called Keyword Chef and it's been so incredibly helpful with finding topics to write about, judging the competition and just doing your whole overall search analysis. So in this video, I wanted to go over what Keyword Chef is and how you can optimally use it to uh, find cracks in your niche and to find topics to write about. So whereas before, I would just go to Google and type in a certain question. So uh, for this video, I'm going to take the niche of campfires as an example. I would just type in can a campfire and then just hit enter and see what the people also ask would show up or what's in the related question section. And I would take these sort of articles or topics and I would kind of judge if these are something I would write about. And those were the topics I would be writing about. But with Keyword Chef, it just kind of automated the whole process. So you no longer have to type into Google all of these weird questions. No longer do you need thousands of variations of your questions. So with can a campfire, is a campfire uh, or an asterisk and then campfire to see what's in front. There were so many variations. And with Keyword Chef, you can kind of do all of this in one click basically. So without further ado, let's just jump into the computer and see what it's all about. So we're now in the computer and this is the homepage of Keyword Chef. Now, there's a lot of things to go over here. Um, we'll be covering everything basically, but uh, I used to be of the opinion that keyword tools are just not that good. And uh, Keyword Chef already shows me why um, with the sense here. Uh, let's face it, most keyword tools suck. And I was always of that opinion as well. Usually they just gave you a very messy uh, answer. And right here they kind of show you why I didn't like them. So if you would search the uh, word pizza, normally you would get things like pizza New York, pizza hut, pizza dough, all these kind of weird questions. But with Keyword Chef you actually get questions that you can write an article about. I mean, what would you write about pizza dough as a keyword? I mean, it can be so many things, but uh, if you get a question how to get air out of pizza dough, that's a great topic to write about. Furthermore, Keyword Chef has this amazing real-time SERP analysis in bulk. It's just fantastic and I'll be showing you what it is in a, in a minute. They also have this uh, smart wildcard search. So when you put the asterisks inside of your sentence, they will uh, fill it in with different sorts of questions. Now, as for pricing, Keyword Chef is a paid tool, but it's not like your typical monthly plan. No, uh, you actually pay for the amount of credits you use. So it's a pay-as-you-go service, not a monthly service. Now, Keyword Chef works with credits and every credit is equal to one keyword. Now, right here, you can see with your starter package, which costs $20, you get 1,200 credits or in other words, 1,200 keywords. Same goes for this $100, you get 10,000 credits and for the $250, you get 50,000 credits. Now, keep in mind that every credit or every keyword is not necessarily something you uh, are going to be able to write about. It's just a suggestion. And sometimes, despite this tool being much more accurate, they still have some weird things in between that just aren't really relevant. But if you want to try it out, I've got an affiliate link down in the description. And if you sign up, you'll get a thousand free credits. So you can kind of mess around and see how you like the tool. And if you do like it, you can always come back and buy some of these extra credits so you can continue on using it. But now as for how this actually works. So as you can see, I've got nearly 2000 credits here and this is how you're going to find your keyword. So you go to discover over here and then right here, you've got this box. So you've got your geo setting. I always like to set it to the United States because I'm targeting American audiences. They are the most valuable for advertisers. I just want everything to be focused on the United States. So I've set this as the default country and then press save. Now right here, you've got wildcard, but you also got questions, best, compare, how to, most, alternatives and ideas. Well, what we're going to do is questions. And what you can then do is I said we're going to be covering campfire. So you type in campfire. There's no need for a question, just type in your seed keyword. And then you press search topic. So right here, you can see that this topic uh, for campfire will cost me 323 credits. But before they are actually taken away, you can uh, kind of play around with the settings. So first off, you got some sample keywords. These are just some examples of what kind of results you are going to get. So you got how many campfires for trike egg, not sure what that is. How hot are campfire coals? That's a pretty interesting question. 
how to make a campfire this is of course a very obvious one uh, why does campfire smoke well that's another one that's i mean it's questionable but it could be a good one so you get these sample keywords to kind of judge if this is going to be something you're looking for so we still haven't spent any credits now here's another cool thing you've got this section ignore keywords with these words so so this tool is going to spit out questions about campfires with these certain words. So if you don't want a question with campfire and then babies, you can click on babies. So when you click on babies, it will turn red and you can see that it actually takes away credits because every word or every question with babies is now excluded. So if you don't want potatoes in there or egg or uh, songs or whatever, you can just kind of click all of these away, the ones that you do not want. So when you click off them away, you can see your credits going down as well. So that's a very good way of saving credits. Um, now you can also see that right here, I have this warning sign with you already have a report for campfire. Uh, and that's because I tried recording this video earlier and I kind of lost all my footage. So I already did this search, but it kind of shows you how great this tool is because it shows you that for the word campfire, I have already spent my credits. So usually you would click on here, get keywords. I'm going to press cancel search. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my reports and then you can see here, you've got all your previous reports. So I did mine six days ago. If you've got all of your others, uh, I don't know, if you've got like hundred search terms here, they will all show up in here. You can even add a project which you can name like campfire and you've got all your campfire questions or beauty site and you've got all your beauty questions. What you're gonna do is I'm gonna click on search terms. Now this is the exact same page you would land on if you clicked on uh, get keywords in the previous section. So this is what you're going to end up with. It's basically a list with a bunch of different questions. So how much does campfire wood cost? Good. That's a good question. How much does tiny campfire wood cost? Maybe another good question or more uh, suitable as a subheading under the other one. Uh, is campfire smoke bad for dogs? Another good one, what to do what to bring to a campfire party. I'm not sure if that's one you want to write. Maybe you do. Uh, what's the average size of a campfire? So you can see there's just a bunch of these questions. And in fact, there is a total of 244 questions. Now, if you're looking here, you can see some other data. You got your uh, search volume. I would probably just ignore these. These are usually not that accurate. Furthermore, if you click here on keywords, you can click on these certain keywords that are appearing in your question. If you want to focus in on smoke, you click on smoke. And right now you've got every question with campfire and smoke. So those are 26 and as you can see, these are 26 questions. So does campfire smoke scare deer? Does campfire smoke hurt your lungs? You've got all your questions. Now, if you want it the other way around, you can click on smoke again. And now you've got your whole complete list of 244 questions minus every one that contains the word smoke. Click it again and you've got your regular list back. But here's where the really fun part is going to start. So right here, you've got SERP. And uh, usually uh, this is what you see, these uh, sort of icons, these are what you see when you first uh, search something. So uh, you can click on these. And when you click on them, you get a total of 30 free clicks with your uh, free credits. Uh, they, these don't cost you any more credits, but they just limit you to 30. If you go with a paid plan, you can do unlimited and you can do a bulk search, which I'm going to show you soon. And that bulk search is basically the primary reason why I would always recommend to go with a paid plan for Keyword Chef, even if it's just the $20 ones. So when you click on one of these icons, you will get uh, the, the icon above here. It's basically a number anywhere from zero to 10. And what this number indicates is the search results for this question. So right here you got, what are good campfire foods? If you click, uh, you don't even need to click, you need to hover over it. You can see right here, it's a top seven. So there's only seven results, but you got some pretty decent sites. You got Delish, Country Living, Taste of Home. These all sound like pretty good, uh, are pretty good websites. If we click on one of these, you can see that it's, a, it's going to be a difficult one to outrank. Uh, but you also can get numbers like three right here with uh, why does campfire smoke follow me? So right here, oh, you can see that it does show 10 and you can see that some are highlighted. So number four is why does the smoke from a fire always seem to follow me? It's a uh, search result from Quora.com. And right here, number seven is from Reddit. 
and right here is a .wordpress.com site. So these are all relatively weak search results compared to all of the other websites. Now you can also have some of these with uh, will aluminum melt in a campfire? This is a six. Right here you can see that the number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are all classed as being pretty poor search results. So with these numbers, you can just go ahead and judge the competition. Now, of course, you always want to double check this in Google because it's still a tool and it's not always 100% accurate, but it gives you such a great indication. But here's why I said that you really should just go with the paid version. You click on get all SERPs and this is probably going to take a minute, but it's running right now. So right now it's just updated and you can see right here, it changed to updated, click to refresh. So we click this one. But what you're going to get is you're going to get these numbers for every single search result. So you can see all the way from here where you got zero, all the way to the top. It's uh, already uh, organized them for you to show the lowest competition first. So right here, what did a campfire say to the other? Well, that's just not something you're going to write about. That's why I said in the beginning that not every credit will be equal to one keyword or one article. It does show basically no competition whatsoever, but it's a little bit weird. Now right here you've got, will a beer bottle melt in a campfire? Again, you got seven, so that means that there are seven weak results. Basically all of these are weak search results. So it's one that you can pretty easily rank for if you write a quality article. Right here, we got the one with will aluminum melt in a campfire? This is once again, a really good question. So right here, it also shows some search volume. I did say that uh, you should probably ignore these and you should, but it also uh, gives you some sort of indication. If this, uh, usually they give you way lower numbers than they are actually are, but if it already shows you some, you know that people will be searching this probably. So right here, it gives you a six and this means that most of these sites aren't that great. So what we can do is we can click on this icon here and it will actually bring up the Google results. So right here you can see Cora as number one. Right here it shows Cora at number two instead of the snippet, but I don't have a snippet. So Cora is basically number one. Then findanyanswer.com and then reddit.com. So you can see find any answer, asking lot and Reddit and probably yeah, asking lot is below. It shows you basically the whole top 10. It's not 100% accurate, but it shows you I have yet to see that it's wildly off. So usually it shows you about 90% accurate results. But what you can do with this one is just, you know that there's only little competition. There's, there's mainly only fora. So you can take this uh, question and you can put it into your hit list. So this is basically your next article. If, you, if, you, if you're writing about campfires, will aluminum melt in a campfire is going to be your next article. Now another feature is right here, you got related and people also ask. So if you click on that one, you can see here, will a glass bottle melt in a campfire? Your related question is, will a beer bottle melt in a campfire? And your people also ask questions are, can you melt glass in a fire pit? How hot does a fire have to be to melt a glass bottle? Will a glass bottle break in a fire? Can a campfire get hot enough to melt glass? These are all related questions or things that people would also ask. Now what you can do with these is you can either take these and make them into their own article, or you can take these and incorporate them in this primary article. So will a glass bottle melt in a campfire? You can take these people also ask questions and use these as subheadings. But to me, this tool is just, it's insane to see how, how much information you're getting for relatively little, uh, uh, little credits. So I only used 244 credits for this. And I got this whole list with fully fleshed out competition analysis. Um, you get all your people also ask questions. You can see how many poor results there are, how many weak results, how many strong websites there are. If you go to the bottom one, for example, why do campfires burn? I mean, that should probably be a very large website. Oh, sorry, this one is kind of going weird. Um, why do they call it a campfire, right? Let's go to that. And you've got some pretty decent sites. You've got Wikipedia and right here for uh, our campfires, bad for the environment. You've got some .gov websites. You, you just get all the information in one page and it's also an infinite scroll page. So no need to click to the next one. It's just pretty incredible to see how much information you get for so little credits. Now what you can do is you can take all of these questions and you can copy and paste them over into your own spreadsheet, the one that you're working with for your website. 
Now, as I mentioned, not every single one of these questions is going to be relevant. Let me just find one. Yeah, like when was the campfire in California? Yeah, that's not really something you would write about. Um, but here, are campfires allowed uh, in certain uh, places? That's one that you could write, maybe a roundup post of every state or whatever. There's just so many things and you get 244 questions, full complete competition analysis, you get all your results. It's just incredible and it makes keyword research so much easier because you can do this for nearly everyone. So, so we go to discover and we go to, let's say gloss, for example, put it at question and search topic for gloss. I mean, you, you'll get the same result as we had with Campfire, but with your new keyword, it's just pretty cool to see. So here you can see 1300 credits, you get some sample keywords, uh, and then you have all these things. So if you don't want glass noodles, because that's cooking related, you don't want that. If you don't want a glass of wine, you can take that away. Gorilla, ice, eat, cream, whatever you want to take away, you can take it away. And right now, if you click on get keywords, you will spend 1148 credits but you get 1148 potential articles for your new site. So I hope I made it clear how easy to use Keyword Chef is and how extremely helpful it's going to be for finding topics to write about. I am personally using this a lot currently and I've been using it to find topics for my newer websites as well as for my older websites. I might even use Keyword Chef to kind of revive the beauty side with a bunch of informational questions because they are so easy to find right now. And maybe Keyword Chef has a different angle or a different approach from what I had. So I would highly recommend every one of you to try Keyword Chef out. It's such an amazing tool and it really just speeds up and helps you along the way with finding topics to write about. So if you want to try Keyword Chef, I have left an affiliate link down below in the description. But that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you learned something from it. I had a lot of questions about my approach to keyword research. And currently, this is it. So I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.